This kind of comes out of a conversation with my head of department around the same time the Raspberry Pi was released. When we were talking about teaching more programming in school. And I kind of said to my head of department, said, instead of just teaching programming on a computer, wouldn't it be cool if we had some hardware connected? Would it be cool if we had like robots? And my head of department said, yeah, that's brilliant, Tim. Go do it. So I had to do a bit of research. And I had a look at what was already out there for teaching kind of programming and looking at robots. And there's certain things like this. This is a little robot called the Moway. And I have a few of these in school. They are really clever little robots. They're about that big. They're tiny. They have sensors on, so they have ultrasonic sensors and line sensors. So like this one, you can bounce off lines. They're great for teaching programming. They can be programmed in a whole raft of different ways. They have just one real problem, which is they cost about £150 a piece. So when I wanted a full class set of them, my head of department kind of said no. So I had to try and find a way of getting this cheaper. And rather than the Raspberry Pi, which had kind of just come out, I wasn't sure what to do with. I came across the Arduino. I actually came across it at the first Raspberry Jam. And what I realized is I needed this. I needed a chassis for my robots. So I needed a platform to put them on. I needed some motors. I needed a brain for my robot. And I needed some power. And I came up with a design which I called the Shrimp Bot. A whole raft of different versions of this now. And the idea was how cheap could I build a robot? And the basic versions of these, which are knocking about in wood at the moment, cost, with the motors, £5 to build. I already had some Arduinos in school, which meant for £5 I had a student, a class set of robots they could have whizzing around the classroom and doing various things. And as far as power is concerned, they ran for a 9-volt battery. These are gone for a whole raft of different versions and sizes. And the great thing about these is, where if my little robots where I panic when they get near the edge of a desk, and they're going to fall off. I don't really care about these because if it crashes and breaks, it's going to cost me about two pound to recut the plastic. It costs about fifty p to cut the wood for them, so they're really kind of reusable. And then we also found that we had <coughs> some big tracks in school, and one of them got broken. Honestly, it got broken. So instead of sending it back, I pulled it to pieces and wound it up with an Arduino and motor controller, and it made quite a nice robot. <coughs> and I have a Dalek, which was one of my last ones. Which again, we found we pulled it apart and wired a motor controller up to it. It worked as a robot quite well. <coughs> we have a few other of these knocking around. But we reached the point where it was great for teaching programming, but we reached some of the limits of the Arduino. And we wanted something a bit more complicated. So we wanted a Raspberry Pi robot. So we bought some Raspberry Pis. And the question was, what do we need for a <coughs> Raspberry Pi robot? So we realized it was pretty much the same. We still needed a chassis, which we already had. We needed motors. We already had those. Raspberry Pis and SD cards, we had those fortunately. We needed some power, we needed some Wi-Fi adapters, and then we needed some other bits and pieces. So the quest then was how cheap could we buy all of these bits? Because we had six Raspberry Pis and so we wanted six robots. But unfortunately, fairly limited budget, we had to limit this down. So we were fairly lucky, we managed to get our hands on some cheap tellies. We were actually needed six monitors for one of the room in our school. So we made the technicians, instead of buying six monitors, we bought six TVs. We actually managed to get TVs cheaper than the monitors they were going to buy. So they're now just kind of dual purpose. They act as monitors quite nicely, but also they connect to the Raspberry Pi. As far as power is concerned, I have a variety of little phone chargers that we picked up. They're about 15 quid on the internet. The one thing we did find is you need relatively powerful ones. The really, really cheap ones you can buy for a tenant don't tend to last very long. So you want a robot that does something, but for our students are concerned, it's an absolute doddle to wind one of these up to Raspberry Pi. It provides all the power you need to run your Raspberry Pi. So then my quest took me to pound shops for the rest of my bits. So I managed to obtain the mice, the charging cables, the HDMI cables, little blocks for setting up the SD cards. All of that came from pound shops or other cheap shops. And it does, when you're doing a class set of them in a school, it makes a huge difference. Because we found for our small suppliers, the cheapest SD cards we could find were about six, SD card, please, were about six pound each. So when you buy a class set of them, or you buy a few of them, that racks up pretty cheap. And actually they're quite reusable little devices. So we ended up with some basic Raspberry Pi based robots. We did come across a few problems. <coughs> the main problem we came across, and it's one I think several people have already solved, if you're doing this for the first time, so the main problem you're going to get is, as soon as you take your keyboard, monitor, and mouse away, you need some way of accessing your Raspberry Pi. 
Now, one simple way is you can use something called SSH to tell terminal in. That gives you the same terminal the Raspberry Pi has, and you can type commands in. We found that worked really well for our year 10 students who are starting to learn Python. They could apply that straight to the Raspberry Pi. But the other problem we had was some of our students, especially in year 8, they wanted to be able to see the actual desktop. So we installed something called x 11 VNC. VNC has been around for quite a while. It allows you to remote control computers. The reason we found you need the X11 version is most versions of VNC on the Raspberry Pi create a virtual desktop. So you don't see the same desktop you would see on the screen. And that caused us some problems for things we wanted to do. We also found we had to find a way of automatically getting the Wi-Fi card to connect to the school network. And actually what we ended up was cheating and using our mobile phones. So all of our mobile phones create wireless networks and we can connect to them. And it means we didn't have to bother with our technicians and trying to set up the school Wi-Fi network. And if you haven't used it before, that's my Raspberry Pi running over there. It's running on a battery. So it has a 20 pound Tesco battery, running quite happily on it. And this is a little thing called WYCD, which is a wireless manager. What it lets you do is automatically connect to your wireless network. There are other ways of doing this. There are more efficient ways of doing this. We found using it with the students, it was the simplest way. All they had to do was go and get that, connect to the access point. It automatically connects it when it booted up. So it kind of simplified things for them. Um, and that's pretty much it. They ran Scratch or they ran Python. They had the robots trundling around the classroom and working. We haven't yet tried it with more than six at once. That's one of the ones we're looking at. The next project my students have in mind is they want to wire up a webcam to the dark so they can have it trundling around the school for a few people. They have an idea for creating something that will patrol the corridors looking for students out of class. But it is kind of one of the great things about the Raspberry Pi that allows for the flexibility. There is a new version of the shrimp bot design, so if you are a teacher in school or you've got access to a laser cutter, you can cut that chassis out, like I said, out of wood, it costs less than a pound. So it gives you a really cheap starting point. And the great thing about these is we can always give them away to students who want them. Whereas when you're looking at the other things that are available, about a £150 a robot, we're a little bit protective of them. Sorry, any questions? That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What do you need for sensors? On, on sensors, so we have a variety. Um, this version here has an ultrasonic sensor on the front of it. It's a HCSR04. They are about £1.50, I think, on eBay. You can buy them very cheap. The reason I like these ones is if you Google that, there's an endless list of ways of wiring them up. As far as the Arduino or the Raspberry Pi is concerned, there's pre-written stuff for these. They're fairly common. That's the whole board with two sensors and the, and the driver chip? That little button, the board. Oh, right. It has four pins on it. One's for power, one's ground, and there's an echo and a return pin. And the I can program them to work anyone can. And all this particular one does, I'll put it on after, it says if the distance is less than 10 centimetres, then turn around and run away. We have had one working with ones on various sides. You've got three in one. We do have a version that's not particularly reliable that uses little micro switches with whiskers on. So some of the students soldered some wires on the end and made whiskers. Which is a much cheaper way of, again, getting it down. Um, that particular basic design with a shrimp on it, so the shrimp Arduino, it costs about £10 for everything to build it. It's about £25 for an Arduino one with an Arduino, and the Raspberry Pi one is then, it goes up. The biggest problem with the Raspberry Pi we found is that for the price of building an Arduino or one of these, it's nearly the same to buy the battery to power the Raspberry Pi. The one thing we did find these is it's rather well, cool because you can set them up anywhere. So I've been trawling through um, charity shops for things like this. And it's pretty much any toy that had a button or a sensor on it and I have a set of these. And this particular one is very running. It's still working. As it dances. And it's triggered by a switch. Which means if you've taught a student to make an LED light on and off, they can make that sync. So I gave it to my GCSE students, we wired it up to the Raspberry Pi, we connected it via SSH, and it sat on top of a cupboard, and the challenge for three of them was make it do something interesting. And they went away and wired it up, so every time someone tweeted the school with the word dog, it was a, no, it wasn't, it was a dog, so it was a barking dog. But every time someone tweeted the school, they barked the dog bot. Then I had to go and explain to the school the person who ran the school's Twitter account, why people kept tweeting the school dog. <laughs> I forgot to mention that first. But again, 
these things came from charity shops. And the mission is kind of, the rice price is a very flexible thing, but it's kind of cheap, kind of cool with ideas for things to do. Especially if you want to do this sort of thing in school, there aren't vast budgets out there for buying more and more equipment. And it has to be a reusable piece of equipment. For a Raspberry Pi concerned, if I come in along and say that I want a Raspberry Pi because I can build that row, but with it for three lessons, I wouldn't get the money. But when I start saying I want a Raspberry Pi because we can put a display board outside the classroom which students' video is showing, and we can make things for Twitter and make things that do this, it kind of makes it a better argument. Right, thank you very much. Thank you.